I'm going to rethink my strap. I think I'm just going to make it uh, like that for now. Um, I want to redo his hair. And uh, I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm. It, it was a little matted, and it's because I was in a rush when I was sculpting in the uh, demo, and I didn't have time to really think about how I was going to do the hair. And I've got the time now. Now this is a true form armature under this, and uh, I could take the head off and work on it by itself, but I'm not going to. I've been trying to decide whether I wanted to put a headdress on him or uh, just to have the hair with the, the feathers like I had before. I was even thinking of putting a buffalo headdress on and I'm still thinking about that. The way I imagine the story is that uh, an enemy has attacked his village and he's sprung to action uh, and uh, he would have grabbed his uh, headdress if he had one or uh, he'd just go you know pick up his war weapons and and uh, that's why the strap is off his shoulder and uh, so I'm just uh, trying to decide what the story is. I went and did a little research uh, on uh, horned headdresses of uh, the Plains Indians, Lakota, and such. And while I was doing that, I was letting my clay get really, really soft under a 100-watt bulb till it becomes uh, so wet uh, or melted that it takes on a characteristic of fur when you put it on. And, uh, of course, I'll have to take it down a little bit once uh, I get ready to take it to a foundry. But this is generally what uh, the long cap of the uh, buffalo hair would be like. Now, they would... Uh, Sometimes, instead of using buffalo fur, they'd uh, take uh, the uh, leather cap that they would make, attach the horns to it. Sometimes they'd be split, sometimes uh, they'd be whole. Uh, just it really was up to the uh, society that that particular warrior belonged to. And they would put hawk feathers on them sometimes. They'd put uh, eagle feathers on them sometimes. Um, this one's going to be a rather plain one. I think. Now, one reason you don't see a lot of photographs of buffalo head-dressed Indians uh, in old photographs is because very, very few of a, a band of uh, warriors was allowed to actually wear a horned headdress it was uh, worn by the uh, the bravest of the brave and, uh, and that was it they would also attach a uh, ermine or weasel a white weasel that uh, exists out here in the west I used to have them crawling around my porch up at uh, the first house I lived in here in Montana and uh, in the summertime they'd be brown and in the wintertime they'd be white I'm going to give it just a little bit of a cape in the back 
and uh, sometimes they would make the uh, headdress so that uh, it would uh, have a tail to it or a cape and uh, sometimes it would be short, sometimes it would be long, sometimes they'd attach feathers to it, sometimes they wouldn't. <laughs> Sometimes it would go down to the middle of their back, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to do with him. I saw a headdress that uh, I liked. I'm going to have to let this clay soften a little bit more so I can get some more fur texture. It looks rather plain right now, but it, believe me, before I'm done, it'll look a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, if they put a full horn on of a buffalo, they'd uh, hollow it out so it wouldn't be so heavy. They would sometimes uh, paint patterns or uh, symbols on the horns. I'm just blocking in the hair. I'll put more detail into it. I just have to build a basis for the hair so they can cast it. Same on the this side. see what it looks like. <clears throat> Alright. Softening up some more clay right now. It'll take a few minutes. Alright, that'll be it for uh, today. And, uh, you know, what I'm creating is kind of like a story, a, a novel, uh, something that you can make a story up about, out of what you know about uh, Native Americans. All right, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, see you next time when we continue making this story.